This video contains elements that are not suitable for children under the age of 14. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, I know what some of you might be saying, but Zach, you've already talked about Series 21 and 22. Skip straight to Series 23. But here's the thing. We talked about Series 21 back when the announcement for Big World Big Adventures was fresh in our minds, and the Series 22 review was us talking about every episode rather than the nuts and bolts that hold them together. I'm revisiting both series for Zodorama to see not only how well my views back then hold up, but also how they stack up against the 20 series prior and the 2 series afterward. So, here I go discussing Series 21 again. With Series 20 finally resolving some loose ends from Soda's Legend of a Lost Treasure and The Adventure Begins, not to mention the first Railway Series adaptations in over 20 years, the fanbase was once again feeling positive about the show's future. Well, for a short while at least. Because when the first trailer to 2017's Journey Beyond Soto dropped, it splintered an already fickle fanbase into a million pieces. Mainly because the engine's movie about on the chassis, which, frankly, is not that big a deal. It never bothered me much back then, and it still doesn't bother me now. I've seen far worse things, and I'm not even gonna talk about them for this review series, for the sake of my sanity and because they're not really relevant to the conversation. Anyway, when Journey Beyond Sodor finally came out in August, people were again greatly divided, but I don't think near as much as The Great Race did. It had a much stronger story and characters, but one thing I think most people agreed upon was that the texturing was a bit flat, most likely due to a month in the production schedule being lost, so they had to work with what they had. Then came Series 21, and out of the five series in the Brenner era, it's an interesting one to say the least. Out of them, Andrew Brenner didn't pen a single episode for this series. Whether it was due to writer's burnout, writing for Journey Beyond Soda and or Big World Big Adventures, and not to mention working on Pablo, I don't know. He penned only two episodes for Series 22 and no episodes for Series 23, and after that, he left the show altogether. Not only that, Series 21 is the shortest ever with just 18 episodes. If we include the Jack in the Pack spinoff, then it's the second shortest. 26 episodes were planned, but according to Soda Island Forms, because the adventure begins to have been fast-tracked into ARC's production schedule, this resulted in the production of both Series 19 and 20 being delayed, and on top of prioritizing the development towards Big World Big Adventures, this meant that 8 episodes out of Series 21 got sent to the scrap heap. We can only speculate what was planned for Series 21 had the reformat not taken place. But does less episodes equate to this series being inferior to series 17 to 20? Not at all, because there are indeed hides that would be considered some of the best ever. Springtime for Diesel, Runaway Engine, Dowager Hat's Busy Day, Terrence Breaks the Ice, Daisy's Perfect Christmas, Unscheduled Stops, The Fastest Red Engine on Sodor. And speaking of that episode, it was the one in which Rosie was revealed to be in a new red coat of paint after being briefly hinted at in Hasty Hannah, as well as a small 20 second cameo in Journey Beyond Sodor. When a promo image of her with the steam team barring Edward and Toby was revealed in January 2017, the reaction was pretty explosive, with more supporters than detractors, with some even going so far as to say it ruined the show, to which I say, that's bullshit. I'm not gonna go too far into that topic, but to those who are still against this makeover, I have this to say, and I'm sorry. It's been four years already, so get over yourselves! Maybe that's the wrong thing for me to say, but it's been long enough already. I think this makeover was something Rosie needed in order to be relevant again, especially since she barely did anything throughout series 13 to 19, series 20 notwithstanding, likely because they were reworking her render at the time. In fact, one of the scrapped episodes was about Rosie getting her repaint, so who knows how that could have gone. She did get one episode, however, in series 22, and that one led to an even bigger explosion, but I'll come to that next time. The other confirmed scrapped episode was going to be about Bulgy the Bus, who is probably the most left field, unexpected returnee since Harvey and Thomas's shortcut, and once again, he was back to his anti-railways after going through a heel face turn and Bulgy rides again. With hindsight, that Series 7 episode just feels wildly out of place with his character. How do you go from hating railways to being amicable with them, and then wanting to take them down again? With that being said, Bulgy would eventually receive an episode to himself in Series 23 with Free the Roads. 
So who knows what the hour six episodes could have been about? Could there have been some emphasis on the newbies from Journey Beyond Sodor? I mean, Merlin did reappear and seeing is believing, as did Beresford and Thomas in the Royal Engine, yet Theo, Lexi, Hurricane, and Frankie remained one-offs to this special only. Rather sad, really. The other returning to this series, one we actually saw coming, was Terrence the Tractor, finally bringing the entire non-human cast of Series 1 in CGI. What I liked was that they gave Terrence a bit more character by making him a bit cocky, akin to his persona in Toby Takes the Road. Adaptable, he boasted. That's what my owner says I am. Go anywhere, do anything, that's me. You take my advice and scrap your rails. Broaden your outlook, like me. It also leads to a bit of clever irony when he forgets his own advice about being safe and sensible. Those are just a few of the highlights from Series 21. So what about the duds? Well, for a start, the Big Freeze was riddled with plot holes and contrivances, especially in the latter half, to make the diesel engines look good and the steam engines weak. I mean, how did the delivery of fuel tankers manage to make it through just fine, yet a train of coal trucks didn't? Wouldn't both have been of equal importance just to keep a railway running? Cranky at the end of the line and New Cream the Dock were just dull and unimaginative, and they do very little with Carly as a character. In fact, since then, she's added very little of value, with the possible exception of sending Thomas off on his big world adventure. But why would it be okay to load Thomas onto a ship that was going to Africa, Carly? Thomas told me that he asked you about it, sir. He said that you thought it was a good idea. A good idea? What did I say was a good idea? The Thomas be the first railway engine to go right around the world? Considering that Brenham is a bit overpopulated, wouldn't it have made better sense to have Carly working at Arlesburg? I mean, the line must have seen a huge boom in traffic since the Horrock extension, so wouldn't that have been more reasonable? There is more than one harbor on Sodor after all, but really, you could have dealt with Cranky and Carly's rivalry in one episode rather than two, making it feel predictable and stretched out. Oh, and we also got this moment. What? So now you speak? You've been standing there silent all these years, Big Mickey, and you've never said a single word. Well, you've never said a single word to me either. Done purely for fan service as if Tugs and Thomas were part of the same universe and with the exception of Steam Team to the rescue, Big Mickey has done nothing of value since that reveal. You could cut it all together and nothing would be affected. Moving on. Lastly, there's Emily in the middle. I figure the only way to do it justice is to let Rachel talk about it. Finally! I've been waiting since for today for and tomorrow to have my say on this episode. <clears throat> okay, this episode is definitely not the Brennan era's best moment. In fact, to this day, I consider it the worst of the Brennan era. And it's only beaten out by BWBA's episode, Apology Impossible, in terms of bad episodes. Why is that? Well, Donald and Douglas tried to act like a pair of idiots throughout the entire episode. I get that siblings argue, but you'd think they wouldn't do that while an important job, at least not in this fashion. And don't get me started on Douglas pepping in front of the signal box incident and vice versa when Donald did the same about the brake van. Guys, those incidents did you favors. Even without my head cannon of Donald smashing the signal box on purpose, by the way, full explanation of that for another time, folks, he still saved Douglas from being scrapped. And no, I'm not over-exaggerating. Listen to this line from Stubham Hat. I am disappointed, Donald. I didn't expect such mm, clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir, said Donald. I should think so, too. You have upset my arrangements. And as for Douglas smashing the brake van, well, I'm gonna let James take over. That spiteful brake van, too, put in James. Good riddance. That's what I say. Exactly, James. I just find this episode a big disgrace to Donald and Douglas' characters. Even Emily and Toby's antics didn't make the episode work for me. <sighs> okay, got that off my chest. Catch you on the flip side, Zach. Thank you, Rachel. For all its gems and stinkers, Series 21 has a few divisive episodes, Amanda being Hasty Hannah, a Series 20 leftover. That episode is liked and disliked for a similar reason, Hannah's antics and how Toby reacts to them. He's usually more confident whenever Henrietta is around, so it's kind of understandable that he'd be a bit more reserved around someone as loud and brash as Hannah. Though Toby could have done a bit more to stand up to her and hold his ground, 
I find Hannah to be a more entertaining character than Carly, because even in the two episodes she appeared in, it really feels like there was a lot more he could have done with making her Toby's second coach. Sure, there's Victoria from the books, but she hadn't really done a whole lot. Not helping is that a Furnace Railway coach would look out of place among some great eastern stock, and that she was introduced in the penultimate Railway series book. So seeing Toby and Henrietta both resisting Hannah's adrenaline junkie-like persona and trying to get her to stop and smell the roses would have been interesting to see. There's also one other divisive episode among the fandom, but I'll come to that in a bit. Prior to their bankruptcy, Arc Productions completed the first seven episodes of Series 21 as well as Terrence Breaks the Ice. From this series on, Jamfield takes over the animation full time. The show even celebrated its 500th episode with PA problems. With Series 24 over, there have been 584 episodes, or to put it more accurately, 578 episodes and 6 mini-specials. If we include the pack episodes and consider the mini-specials as episodes, then the show's run is 500. 97 episodes, just shy of 600 if you exclude the cancelled episodes. For both series 21 and 22, Michaela Winter was producer taking over for Ian McHugh. He would take over the role once more following Winter's departure. Series 21 also marks the last one with Mark Morahan as narrator. As I mentioned with series 17, he's still involved in some capacity with Thomas and Friends Storytime, as well as voicing Dexter the coach in School of Duck. Although his tenure was not as long as Michael Angelis, his name's Nigel. Mark's tenure as narrator is one to be respected for sure. For the next three series, Thomas takes over as the narrator, voiced by Joseph May for America and John Hasler for the United Kingdom. Alright, so now that I've gotten the rest of Series 21 out of the way, we can finally talk about what many of you have been waiting for me to deliver my thoughts on. But first... Perhaps I could stay one more night huh? with Philip, if that's alright with you, sir. You uh, can stay as long as you like. Forever even. Well, it is nearer my branch line. Well, Edward, if you want to move to Wellsworth, that's fine by me. I'm okay with this. So, where do I begin with this? Well, can I just say that this was the point where. Sit down, Matt, you fat bummer! Dude, are you okay? What did you just say? I said. Zach, what was all that about? Wow, I've never heard that kind of use of profanity in all my life. That's kind of too much, even for me. Sorry, but maybe if I wasn't interrupted so constantly by short stack over here, I wouldn't have needed to blow my stack if the shoe fits. Well, if you think the shoe fits, Zach, why don't you turn around and bend over so I can show you where it fits? That's enough, you guys. Matt, go and take a walk. Zach, proceed with what you were going to say. Alright, so as I was about to say, a shed for Edward marked the Blue Engine's departure from Tip of Sheds, and oh my god, did it lead to the biggest divide in the fandom since... ever. Many, and I mean many, people treated us as if it was a life or death situation. Even going so far as to say it was the beginning of the end for the show, some people even going as far as to say it was the end, period. And my reaction to that is... Really? In a show where we've had firefighters acting stupid, this is the worst thing ever? Not even close. If you take a step back and think about it, Edward barely works as a leading character. Hell, in a lot of episodes from the classic era, he was very much a supporting character. Cows, for example, was about Henry and Gordon bragging about not letting cows get the better of him, only for the pair to encounter a cow on the bridge, and Edward makes a wisecrack about it. Old Iron was about James getting annoyed with Edward being late and becoming a runaway the following day, resulting in Edward coming to his rescue. The only episode in which Edward was actually the main character was Edward's exploit, and that was about him trying to overcome being crippled by a damaged crank pin. And those are just the ones I can name off the top of my head. Every time Edward got a starring role in series 8 through 16, he was basically Edward in name alone. His personality was altered so that he didn't feel like the Edward we knew and loved. Edward in the mail makes him come off as a cowardly idiot. Charlie and Eddie had him bow easily to peer pressure and he got scolded for the crap Charlie caused. And the less said about Edward strikes out, the better. 
Even in the Brenner era, whenever Edward had starring roles, he was predominantly a side character. Even in Old Reliable Edward, it was more about bringing Gordon down a peg. PA problems in this series was about Sir Tom Hat feeling overconfident about his new public address system, only for it to turn out faulty. A Shed for Edward is the only episode throughout all of series 17 to 21 in which he's actually the main character, and that was about him leaving the main cast, which was the best thing to ever happen to him. And no, I'm not being sarcastic. With Edward out of the steam team, a concept which was non-existent and should have been done away with by this point, that meant that he would never be poorly characterized again, if the likes of Hunt the Truck or anything to go by. That being said, the fact that he and Henry had their roles reduced to that extent in Big World Big Adventures was pretty dumb. They deserved to be major supporting characters in that era. At least Toby had a couple of episodes dedicated to him, even when he wasn't part of the steam team anymore. Oh, and before they complained about Edward and Henry lacking starring roles in series 22 to 24, keep in mind that neither of them had a starring role in the Railway series since the 1990s, so consider yourselves thankful that they appeared in those three series at all. But getting back to a shed for Edward, him moving to Wellsworth was the right thing to do with him since, as he stated himself, it is closer to his branch line. Plus, with mentoring Philip, it really feels like this generation is Thomas and Edward. It makes sense for Edward to mentor a much younger engine like Philip. We should have seen this coming from a mile away back in series 19, like like I said, it didn't come from nowhere, folks. If anything, it was very clever, subtle foreshadowing. Makes little moments like that more important than they would have been back then. And since Edward was the first friend Thomas made upon his arrival to Sodor, it made sense that he would be the one to say goodbye first. We'll miss you here at the Sheds, Edward. I'm sure we'll see each other all the time. You can be emotional when friends move away, and that's perfectly fine, but you can also feel excited about making new friends and wondering about what lies ahead for you in the future. It's a natural part of life, you know. In all honesty, I'm not that bothered about the engines changing the subject because they know they'll still see Edward no matter what. After all, there are more important things than just moping about the fact a friend moved away. It shows how strong the engines are on the inside. Except for Gordon, of course, but that's another story. Look, I get that people would be upset over Edward leaving the Steam Team. He was, after all, the first character introduced in the Railway series, and therefore, he's Audrey's most iconic character. But just because Edward was the first character introduced in the franchise, that doesn't automatically make him the greatest thing since Welsh Cole, and no, that does not automatically make me an Edward hater. I still respect the old Iron as much as the next guy, but I still think there have been much better characters after him. If Edward truly was the best character in the entire franchise simply because because he was the first to be created, by that logic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves would be a far greater animated Disney feature than The Lion King, Fantasia, Wreck-It Ralph, The Nightmare Before Christmas, 101 Dalmatians, The Toy Story series, Tangled, Finding Nemo, Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, Leading the Tramp, Inside Out, Beauty and the Beast, Big Hero 6, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, The Incredibles, Frozen, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Meet the Robinsons, and Zootopia. Could anyone really picture Snow White being ranked better than all the above movies on the pure basis that it was Disney's first ever animated movie? That's not to say I think Edward is a bad character. Quite the opposite, in fact. He's a character that I respect more than I love, and at the very least, he'd be top 25 material, but not in the top 10. If a show ended with a shed for Edward, I'd be okay with that. After all, his very first episode was about wanting to get out of the sheds and be useful, so it feels like they've gone full circle here. What else can you do except have started a new one. So is a shed for Edward really worth the controversy? I don't think so. Again, I understand why fans would get upset over it, but I believe it's for the best. To an extension anyway. I really wish I could go on, but I feel I should wrap things up, but I'm not ruling out the possibility of a follow-up review. We'll see. As for Series 21 as a whole, this is going to surprise a lot of you, I'm sure, but Series 21 is my favorite CGI series. Not just of the Brennan era, but the CGI series as a whole, period. In fact, I now rank it as the second best series so far, only behind Series 2. Apologies to Series 20, but the bad episodes under its belt mean that it's now just shy of hitting the top 5 best. You see, everyone's got that one series of a show, any show, that's personal to them, whether it's for nostalgic reasons, 
reasons or for sentimental reasons. So if you want to know why Series 21 is so special to me, let me take you back to 2017. At that point, I was moving house from California to Oregon, and I had transitioned from one college to another. We'd already put out our first episode of Emotions Corner, and the next one wouldn't come out till October. Looking back, America was already on a bit of a downward path, thanks a lot, President Biff. And even before the COVID pandemic, watching something like Wonder Woman or Milo Pony the movie felt like a form of escapism. It was very much the same thing for Thomas's 21st season and Milo Pony 7. Watching either of them helped me to forget about what was happening in the real world and to get away from my worries for even a minute. And looking at what the future lay ahead for the brand, my feelings for Series 21 hold up now like they did back in 2017, perhaps even stronger. Yes, Series 21 has a few duds, and Lane the Middle immediately springs to mind, but I feel the gems it had more of it made up for them, and I feel like it did maintain its quality for the first four series that preceded it. It's a miracle that this series came out at all, considering all the crap it went through just to get big old big adventures off the ground. Series 21 is the last great series of Thomas and Friends, and it's one that I'll always have a special place in my heart for because it helped me overcome a life-changing year. Yes, it's a shame that it was cut short, and I get why fans would rank it lower for that reason alone, but really, it's quality over quantity that truly matters. And for me, it was those moments of escapism and reassurance that really helped its position on my list. And with three series to go, I don't see my top five favorite series changing anytime soon. I feel this line from Daisy's Perfect Christmas sums everything up. Maybe it wasn't better or worse than usual, just different. Today wasn't perfect like it used to be, it was a new kind of perfect. That right there is a line that holds up just as strongly now as it did back then, or maybe more. Alright, so that does it for the Burner era. I'm gonna go out and say that it's the best era of the show, just barely edging out above the classic era. My one reason for that is that the Burner era relied a lot more on the swing for the characters to help tell its stories. As good as the first seven series are, the reliance on the narrator did hold them back a bit. Of course, like the classic era, the Burner era was not without its share of duds, but more on that in a bit. Series 17 was something of a slow start, but it showed promise for changes to come. Series 18 built on that foundation and even improved on its predecessor's weak points. Series 19 was a real step down, however, but thankfully, Series 20 came along to pick things up again and brought out some of the show's greatest ever episodes, and Series 21 was where the show reached a new peak. I doubt that there will ever be another period of show like it, but which episodes from that era do I think were the best? There were so many good ones that it wasn't easy whittling it down to just 10, so this is what I come up with. Number 10, Thomas's Shortcut. Number 9, Thomas the Babysitter. Number 8, Dowager Hat's Busy Day. Number 7, Tit for Tat. Number 6, Duncan and the Grumpy Passenger. Number 5, Love Me Tender. Number 4, Daisy's Perfect Christmas. Number 3, Slow Steven. Number 2, A Shed for Edward. And number 1, Best Engine Ever. Now, picking out the worst episodes from the Brenna era wasn't that hard. Because so many great episodes came from that era alone, much like the classic era, the bad episodes tend to stick out a bit more. Had they ended up in series 8 through 16, the following 10 episodes would have likely gotten lost in the shuffle. Number 10, The Frozen Turntable. Number 9, Helping Hero. Number 8, Saving Time. Number 7, Samson's End for Scrap. Number 6, Henry Spots Trouble. Number 5, Emily in the Middle. Number 4, The Other Side of the Mountain. Number 3, Engine of the Future. Number 2, Free Steam Engines Gruff. And number 1, Rocky Rescue. If you made it this far in the video, I congratulate you. I'll admit that it did go on a bit longer than I was attending, but anyway, that's four errors down, only one more to go. I'm Zach, you're watching Sodorama, and next time we'll be discussing the final era of the show as we knew it since 1984. Yep, we'll finally be taking a dive into the Big World Big Adventures era. Huh? That's what I said. The next set of episodes I'll be going over will be the ones from the Big World Big Adventures era. You and the others knew that from the get-go, Matt. Oh sh Actually, I think I'll let Mula Flaga say it for me. Oh, shit! Yeah, I hear you, Moo. This is not gonna be fun. Oh, but it will be for me, Matt, once I've dealt with you. Oh, no. Here we go again. If you need me, I'll be in my room playing Crash I'm getting the medical kit. Report to me on the damage, bro. Wait, what do you mean? Zach, what are you? For many years, we've slept by the side Of our Northwestern family Part of this beautiful team
so deep. 